Good evening and welcome to E-Bible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 28 of Revelation chapter 6 and we'll be reading verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. We've been looking at this verse and this passage for several studies now. And we've seen how God identifies Judgment Day as a time of spiritual darkness because he has removed the gospel light from the world. And we've spent a considerable amount of time on this. And, and so we're going to move on to the next statement at the end of verse 12, where it says, the moon became as blood. And this statement is um, kind of familiar. We've, we've read it before in the Bible. If you remember, back in the book of Joel, in Joel chapter 2, it says in verse 31, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Jehovah come. And then this verse or actually this passage in Joel is quoted in the New Testament book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, and in verse 20, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And, and these are the um, only places we read, that I'm aware of, of the moon being turned into blood. And in none of these passages, in none of these places, does God tell us what that means. What does it mean if the moon is turned into blood? He, he just states it matter-of-factly. And, well, he doesn't tell us uh, either what, the, what it means that the sun shall be darkened. We had to search the Bible, and then we realized that God is typified by the sun, and he is the light of the world spiritually. And so if the sun is darkened, the gospel light goes out on the earth. There's no more light, no more salvation. And we will have to do a similar thing in attempting to allow the Bible to define these terms uh, and to allow God to uh, give us insight into what he means by this language that the moon is turned into blood. Now, the, the first thing that's helpful for us is to keep in mind, as we did look at this earlier, that the moon is a type and a figure of the law of God or of the word of God. It is a picture of the Bible itself as the Bible is God's law book. And even though we do not find other scripture that refers uh, to the moon turning into blood, what happens if we, if we think about the type and, and we, we look for that kind of picture. What I mean is, since the moon represents the Word of God, the Bible, is there anything else that represents the Word of God, the Bible, that maybe God has used and, and has similar language concerning uh, that type and figure being turned to blood? And, and the answer is, yes, there is. It so happens that the Bible does speak of something else being turned to blood, and that is water. Water, water of a river, water of a sea, water that typifies the gospel. Remember when the Lord Jesus was upon the cross, and one of the Roman soldiers pierced his side and out flowed blood and water flowing forth from his side. And, and really, the blood pictured the blood of Christ, the atoning blood that would 
cover over the sins of his people. It pictured his life that he gave for their sake. And the water represented the gospel that would go forth as a result. But they're very similar in nature. And and so God speaks of the moon being turned to blood, but he also speaks of waters that are turned to blood. In the book of Exodus, um, for example, in Exodus chapter 7, in the days of um, deliverance of the Jews, at the time that God had raised up Moses and, and had... Um, commanded Moses to go to Pharaoh and to pronounce the plagues that God was bringing upon Egypt in order that Pharaoh let the children of Israel go. We read in Exodus 7, in verse 17, Thus saith Jehovah, In this thou shalt know that I am Jehovah. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood, and the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe the drink of the water of the river. And uh, here, uh, this is a historical occurrence. This actually happened in time. God did literally turn the waters of Egypt to blood, and the Egyptians did loathe to drink of the water in verse 20 of Exodus 7. And Moses and Aaron did so as Jehovah commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt as a result of turning the river, the water of Egypt to blood. It resulted in the fish dying and, and putting forth a stink. And uh, if, of course, um, if you've ever had fish, if you've even gone into a market where they sell fresh fish, you can smell the odor. They quickly stink when they're taken out of the water. And what does fish represent in the Bible? Well, remember what Jesus said to his apostles, that they should follow him and he would make them fishers of men. And we, we know that when there was a great catch of fish in, um, in the book of John, 153 great fish that they typified the great multitude of sinners that God would bring forth to salvation during the time of the Great Tribulation. Fish represent men. And when the, the water is turned to blood as water pictures life, it, it identifies with the gospel of God. Egypt is a type and figure of the world. And here God is picturing the gospel being uh, ruined within the world. And what will uh, happen as a result is that men will die. The, this is the, the spiritual picture that God is painting. This is the, the consequence of the plague that he brought upon Egypt. Now, it, it, uh, it's interesting in Isaiah chapter 50, because we're, we're working under an assumption. I think it's a pretty good assumption, but it's an assumption that the moon represents the law of God or the word. And when it's turned to blood, it would be synonymous to the idea of waters being turned to blood because water likewise can represent the word of God. And, and remember how God speaks of um, drawing water out of the well of salvation. And, and God's word brings salvation. Well, that, that's our assumption. But let's turn to Isaiah 50. And we read in verse 2, Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? 
or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea, I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh, because there is no water, and dieth for thirst. Now here, it, it's not saying the water is turned to blood, but the water is dried up, and as a result, their fish stink and, and die for thirst. And again, the fish would represent men. And when there is no water, where there is no word of God, men die spiritually. But notice the next verse in Isaiah 50, verse 3. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. Well, here God is joining together the idea that the river at his rebuke is dried up, and their fish stink and die, with the very next verse that he clothes the heavens with blackness and makes sackcloth their covering. And keep in mind, that's the verse we're coming from in Revelation 6, verse 12, that God clothed the sun with, with sackcloth of hair, and there was blackness, and the moon he turned to blood. See, it's a, it's a similar spiritual um, teaching that when water dries up or when water turns to blood, it is akin to the moon turning to blood or the sun being darkened. It, it, they're teaching the same thing. They're teaching that the gospel, uh, the true gospel, the blessing of the gospel is gone and there is no salvation possible. Therefore, men will die. They will, they will not experience salvation at all. This is the picture that God is giving us. And this is the picture, for instance, that we find in Revelation in a few places. Let's start in Revelation chapter 8. In Revelation 8. We read in verse 8, and I'll read verse 9 also, And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of ships were destroyed. Now just to... Um, remind us, Revelation 8 is a, a chapter that details God's judgment on the third part repeatedly, again and again. He, he speaks of the third part of this and the third part of that that is coming under his wrath. And the third part identifies with the corporate church, where true believers were found throughout the church age as the third part identifies with true believers and, and in turn true believers with the church. And, and therefore the church uh, likewise became identified with the third part. And here the third part of the sea became blood and the third part of the creatures in the sea which had life died. And, and it is exactly the same as the fish in the river that die. They die because the river was turned to blood in Egypt. And in the churches, when God uh, pronounces the judgment, when judgment began at the house of God and the great tribulation got underway beginning on May 21 of 1988, well, immediately the waters of the churches turned to blood. And a, a little further down in this same chapter, God refers to uh, the sun, moon, and stars in verse 12. In Revelation 8, verse 12, And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for the third part of it, and the night likewise. And again, it's synonymous with, with the waters being turned to blood that was mentioned earlier. It's teaching an identical truth that the gospel light, in this case, is put out and the gospel water is turned to blood 
to judgment. There is no more salvation. As the Lord sends forth his people, they're likened to fishermen fishing in the sea of this world where the wicked dwell, and and they're letting down their net, which is the gospel, the, the word of God. And in that sea, God had his elect throughout the church age, but now the waters uh, can no longer be fished. Now there is no more any creature that can be brought up alive. Uh, if you let down your nets in, in these bloody waters, you'll only bring up dead fish. There will be no more um, deliverance of souls. There is no more salvation within the church. That, that's what God is teaching us. You know, he, he also tells us in Revelation 11, in verse 6, something that uh, we haven't really thought too much about concerning the two witnesses. And it says in Revelation 11, verse 6, These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, we, we first need to understand who the two witnesses are. The two witnesses are typified by Moses and Elijah. Remember when the Lord was on the Mount of Transfiguration, two men appeared with him, Moses and Elijah. Moses is a type of the law. God moved him to write the first five books of the Bible known as the law. Elijah was a prophet, and therefore he represents the prophets. Moses and Elijah together represent the law and the prophets, which is a figure of speech to refer to the word of God or to the Bible, to, to all scripture. These Two witnesses are God's representatives, and the people of God identify with them because they carry forth the word of God. But the two witnesses uh, had their testimony within the churches and congregations throughout the period of the church age for 1955 years, but then their testimony was finished. It says in the very next verse in Revelation 11, verse 7. As God removed his spirit from the midst of the churches, it immediately it ended the testimony of his word within the churches and congregations, and their water was turned to blood. Just as it says again in Revelation 11, verse 6, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood. And God turned the waters of the churches to blood, as we saw in Revelation 8 with the, the third part, the judgment upon the sea of the third part. And you see, it's the word of God, as we have learned these things, that turns the gospel waters to blood. We were within the churches. God's people were gathering in the churches like anyone else. Why did we stop? Well, because we're living at the time of the end, and God opened up the scriptures, as he said to Daniel that he would, and he revealed to his people that the church age was over, and that it was time for uh, the elect to come out of the church, to depart out. Yes, and and he also revealed that the Holy Spirit had abandoned the churches and that Satan had entered in. Now, what did this do to the gospel waters of the church? As far as as, as the true believer now could could recognize it and understand it, well, this immediately turned the gospel waters to blood. And we realized there is no blessing of any kind within any church or congregation now. You can't have blessing without God's Spirit. 
And of course, you can't have blessing when Satan is the one who has taken his seat as the man of sin. And we we had better get out. There is no water, no pure truth, no faithful teaching of the word of God anymore. There is no blessing of God upon the gospel proclaimed within the churches. It was a ruination of the waters of the gospel. That's what God's word did when he opened it up to reveal that judgment had begun upon the churches and congregations and and uh, the waters would never be healed. They would never be restored or return uh, to their pure condition ever again. So we're not to go back to the church for any reason at all. And And likewise, it was God's word, the Bible, that revealed that Judgment Day would occur on May 21 of 2011. And by that time, God would have saved all of his elect, and then he would shut the door of heaven. Remember, it says here in Revelation 11:6, These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And it's referring to the testimony or witness of God through his word. And the two witnesses, after they were slain in the church later, after three and a half days, stood upon their feet, uh, as we would find if we continue reading in this chapter. And, and that is pointing to the time of the latter rain, when God's word would begin to uh, bring that pure water outside of the churches and congregations. And, and the rain would fall, and, and wherever the rain fell, there would be life and and God saved a great multitude actually we have a a nice picture of that in Ezekiel chapter 47 where God pictures the the waters that go forth and and a great number of fish are are healed by the waters and and live as a result pointing again to all those that God saves during the little season of the great tribulation but there was a time uh, period associated with the latter rain. The latter rain would fall simultaneously with the Great Tribulation. Once the Great Tribulation concluded, the latter rain would conclude. And so the rain ceased to fall on May 21 of 2011, and God had done his work of saving. And now the Bible, the Word of God once again, now the the scriptures and and their witness turn the Bible, God's word, the law, or the moon to blood. And it's not just the third part of the waters, but all the waters. The in, the entire word of God now is is not bringing forth life, but now as the the gospel goes into the world. Uh, if anyone is attempting to bring God's word in a saving way, it is only uh, bringing waters that have been turned to blood. We read in Revelation 16, in verses 3 and 4, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers, and fountains of waters, and they became blood. This is the condition of the gospel in the church or outside of the church, the world over at this time in the day of judgment. There is no water to be found to drink for a sinner, just as the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. The, the waters became blood, and that is referring to the, the word of God that once brought salvation to sinners. Now there is only condemnation. There is only judgment. There is no more grace, no more mercy. The mercy of God has 
already been extended or bestowed upon those whom he would have mercy upon, there is no further mercy possible for anyone else.